Good morning, dudes. You're watching Duty's Daggers. I'm Kevin, and today's topic is um, things to be wary of and just general advice for somebody that's uh, getting into the knife collecting, knife community, knife world in general at large. Um, there are some things that I wish I knew when I was starting out that I want to uh, impart to you guys. Uh, if you are just starting out uh, collecting knives or if you've been around for a while, uh, there's still s some things in here that you might find interesting. Um, so let's, uh, let's get into it. First, I just thought of one thing I wanna write down so I don't forget. Okay, so uh, first of all, some things to be wary of as uh, somebody that's just getting into knives. Um, when I first started collecting knives, my main source of information was YouTube. Uh, and I'm sure that's the case for a lot of you guys, most of you guys, maybe all of you guys. Uh, it's just, you know, YouTube's a great place for information. Uh, it's the best place for information, possibly. Um, and you know, you you start searching knife channels, you kind of find a, a reviewer that you like, a couple of reviewers you like, and you start watching them and you uh, start trusting their opinion. Um, but a, things to, a couple of things to be wary of um, when talking about uh, knife reviewers is um, be wary of uh, reviewers that are trying to sell you stuff. And um, of course, I'm not going to be talking about anybody in particular here. And it's, I would say, the majority of knife review channels um, are very upfront and uh, candid about... Uh, you know, uh, if, if they're uh, getting a cut of the sales or anything like that. Um, but just be aware, you know. Um, if a reviewer is always saying things like, this is the best ever, and um, this is incredible, this, this is uh, the best one yet, you know, things like that, that kind of... That gives me pause a little bit when they're when they're always saying that something's the best time and time again. Um, also, be aware of uh, hype around a new knife design. Um, don't always buy into the hype, especially just starting out. Um, I know that when I was uh, first starting collecting knives, um, anytime not anytime, but a, a lot of times when a re when a reviewer would say that a budget knife was really, really good and awesome, I would go buy it. And um, sometimes I was happy, sometimes I was eh, not so happy with the purchase. But what ended up happening was um, at the end of my first maybe year, or six months of collecting, I had a big stack of budget knives, some that I liked, some that I didn't like, and um, I didn't want them anymore. <laughs> I wanted to keep the ones I liked, but I had too many. And uh, the resale value on budget knives is not great. Um, if you're talking about super budget knives, like, you know, under 50 bucks, um, sometimes it's not even worth selling them. Uh, it's not even worth the trouble. Uh, shipping costs and, um, you know, you're not gonna, you're gonna sell it cheaper than what you bought it for, obviously. Um, Maybe it's used, uh, maybe you'll use it a little bit and maybe you'll get 10, 15, 20 bucks of your money back, maybe. Um, so be aware of that. Um, be Try to be selective with your knife purchasing. Um, you know, when you're just starting out, you know, you kind of do need to try a, a wide variety of things to kind of fine tune what you like and kind of realize what things you're looking for in a knife but be selective um i would say buy a a well-reviewed and uh widely agreed upon uh good budget knife in a couple of different blade shapes you know um a warren cliff a sheep's foot a nice drop point um, a clip point and a tanto those are kind of the five main ones um, and, uh, try them out, you know, 
Uh, if you are pretty sure you're not going to like a clip point, yeah, you can leave one out. If you're pretty sure you're not going to like a tanto, yeah, you can leave it out. You can try one later. Um, but kind of figure out what kind of blade shape you like. And then maybe try a couple different locking mechanisms. Um, you know, liner, frame lock, button lock, compression lock. Uh, you know, all kinds of, there's a bunch of different kinds of locking mechanisms, but try some and just be selective is what I'm trying to say. Um, don't just go run and buy something when, after a reviewer says that this is the best budget knife ever. Um, be wary. Um, also, when a reviewer gets a knife for free on their channel to review, it that's going to affect their review of the knife at least a little bit and I think that's the case for everybody even myself um, I, I don't think it's possible to not let it that affect you at least a little bit even subconsciously um, you treat things differently when you buy them with your own money and that's just a fact you, you cannot get around when you get something for free you just don't treat it the same and you don't look at it the same as if you had spent your hard-earned money on it. So um, that's that's a reason that I always, um, if I'm talking about a knife in a review, I always at the beginning of the video say that I got it for free if I did. And it's not very common, but you can rest assured that if I got a knife for free and I'm reviewing it, you will know. And uh, I think that's important because uh, because of the reasons I just said. You know, um, even though we're trying not to let it affect our, our judgment of a knife, it is going to at least a little bit. Um, moving on, um, there are stigmas around different blade steels. Um, you know, what, when you're new in the knife community, you met a uh, knife community, you might hear a lot of people talking shit about D2 or something like that. Um, M390, um, and some of that is warranted, but a lot of it isn't. Um, for example, people like to talk shit about D2. I happen to really like it as a budget steel. Um, you get higher edge retention uh, with D2 than with 14C28N. Um, however, it's not a stainless steel. For me, that's not an issue. I don't care. Uh, it might be for you. Um, but if you hear a lot of people talking shit about a blade steel... Um, I don't know, do some research and figure out what it's all about. Now, a really good resource for blade steel is um, knifesteelnerds.com. Uh, this is Laren Thomas's uh, website. He is a professor of steel, basically. He is very knowledgeable in all kinds of steel. He's a, he's a metallurgist. Um, I'm going to put a link down below uh, beneath this video that will take you to an article he did when in that article, you will see charts. You will see charts of all the different blade steels. There's one chart for um, non-stainless and a chart for stainless steels. And in that chart, you will see uh, that he assigns values for the three main elements in knife steel. Stainlessness, edge retention, and toughness. Um, so if you're curious about, I don't know, you look down, you want to know more about uh, 15V. You want to see what its properties are. You look down there, you'll see, uh, okay, edge retention, he gave it a 12, which is very high. The, the the scale really goes, or used to go from 1 to 10. But for 15V, the edge retention was so high, he had to go above to like 12. I think it's 12. Um, and you'll look and you'll see, okay, stainlessness is a 3. So it's not very stainless. And then toughness, it's kind of lower too. It's like, I don't know, 4 or 5, whatever it is. Um, now that is, so it's a really good resource to kind of figure out what characteristics characteristics that blade steel is going to have. Now there's a lot of variables. Um, the heat treat that the the knife maker does on that steel is going to change those values a little bit, maybe a lot. Um, so it's not a cut and dry thing where it, you know you look at this at the chart and 15V is a 12 in edge retention. It might vary uh, once you actually get the knife and it's been heat treated. But I think that chart is a really good kind of baseline point of reference for blade steels. As long as you know that 
those things will vary, but it's a very, it's a good baseline and a really good thing to look at um, when you're trying to decide on a, a Blaze deal. Um, and again, that will be linked down below. I, I have it bookmarked on my uh, phone and computer. It's, it's, I, I look at it all the time. It's a very good resource. Um, next, uh, save up for more a more premium knife sooner rather than later. Um, I bought only budget knives, you know, uh, 150 b uh, bucks and under. Well, for the first like six months, I, I only spent, uh, you know, less than 75 bucks. Um, my first over a hundred dollar purchase was a Spyderco PM2. And that completely changed the game for me. Um, so I, I would say make sure you do that, uh, sooner rather than later. Save up for you know, and premium for you could mean different, uh, different than it is for me. Um, whatever your view of premium is, probably the lowest end of premium would be like a, you know, a Spyderco, uh, a Benchmade, something uh, you know, two hundred dollars or less, right, right around there, could be premium for some people. Um, and my advice would be to do that soon because um, you're going to notice a big difference. Uh, mostly in the steel, probably, especially if it's uh, Spyderco, and just the general build quality and everything. Um, so don't fill up your your collection with only budget knives. Save up for something nice. Um, you know, anyone can buy a hinderer. It just might take you longer to save up than others, or might not take you as long. Maybe you can go buy one right now if you wanted to. But anyone can do it, um, and uh, I, I recommend doing it. Um, a couple more here. Um, back to the old, uh, reviewers kind of thing. Um, my advice for, for listening to knife reviewers is find a reviewer that is doing things with their knives uh, that's similar to what you're doing with your knives. Um, if you are somebody that's more of a collector, um, not as much a user, more of a collector, you know, uh, maybe you have like two or three users, but the rest of your knives, you want to keep pristine and nice and you're, you're just collecting them. Uh, find a reviewer that's into that kind of thing as well. If you're someone that, um, is uh, into bushcrafting and survival, find a reviewer that's into that kind of thing and is doing that stuff with their knives. Um, if you're like me, that's kind of middle of the road and you, you know, you, you, uh, use your knives a lot, uh, throughout the day, but you don't go crazy hard on them. Uh, find someone, uh, that does that with their knives because their opinions are going to be different on the knives. You know, uh, somebody that's really into bushcrafting, um, is going to think differently of, uh, I don't know what's the only knife I have here, a sun, sun cut Watuga. This is not a good bushcrafting knife, so obviously they're gonna they're not gonna love it. Um, and someone that's really more into collecting than using um, isn't going to appreciate, you know, good cutting geometry as much as others. Um, stuff like that, Sh sharpening choils, um, that, that stuff's not gonna matter as much to them. So, uh, yeah, find someone that's more in line with with what you do with your knives. Uh, next, watch cut test videos. Um, kind of a, a, a plug to myself here, but I'm not the only one that does cut test videos. Um, but I do have a lot of them and they're all on a playlist, um, cut tests. I think there's almost 200 in there now. Um, but if you're thinking about buying a knife, watch a cut test on it. Uh, see how it passes through material. See how well it cuts with different types of cuts. Um, See how the edge is uh, retaining. See how the uh, you know how well the edge is, is lasting. Uh, it's really helpful when you're trying to you know uh, consider uh, purchasing a knife. Um, next, uh, if you if you okay, this is uh, this is some advice that I got really early on that uh, saved my ass, and, and that is this: when you get a brand new knife and it has a little bit of lock stick, maybe. Um, or maybe the action isn't quite as uh, smooth as you thought it would be, give it time to break in. Give it time to break in at least a couple weeks because nine times out of 10, that issue is gonna resolve itself. It's gonna get really smooth. The lock stick's gonna go away. Um, when I was early on, uh, I was just talking about my first uh, Spyderco, my first PM2. It had lock stick and it was not falling shut like I saw in the videos. 
I almost returned it because I thought there was something wrong with it. But I was watching a video from Metal Complex and he said, do not return the knife right away, let it break in. So I did and a couple weeks later it was perfect. So um, give it time. If you think you might return it, uh, maybe don't hard use it, just flick it a bunch. Flick it a bunch, keep it in your pocket, use it for light stuff that's not going to damage anything. And um, let it wear itself in and it'll those things will resolve themselves and it'll be perfect most of the time. Um, that's kind of it. A couple smaller things. Uh, try to go to a knife show if you can. It's a good opportunity to handle a lot of knives that you would otherwise not be able to get your hands on. Um, I didn't go to my first knife show until pretty recently, and it was a small one in my, uh, my neighboring town. And, um, it was amazing, dude. I got to handle so many knives I've always wondered about, always been curious about couple high-end things I would never be able to really buy. Um, so it was great. If you can, go for it. It doesn't have to be one of the big ones. It could be just a local one. Um, a lot of times gun shows have uh, knives at them. So yeah, it, it's a great place to really handle things and kind of get a feel for things you, you might like. Uh, that's kind of it. Just enjoy the journey. Um, you know, take these things into consideration, but, you know, kind of feel it out for yourself. It's your own journey, so do it how you want, and um, you're going to learn along the way, and uh, when you get to where I am right now, which is, I haven't been collecting knives for that long. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been doing it way longer than me, um, but now, I ha by now, I have kind of formulated uh, and kind of really dialed in what I like in a knife, and... Um, I buy things that I'm pretty sure I'm going to like. I kind of already know I'm going to like a lot of times because um, I just know. I know what I like. It's a really fun hobby. There's a lot of really great people. Um, you can, I mean, hit up anybody on Instagram, email, in the comment section. Um, there will be so many people that jump in to answer your questions, to... Uh, talk to you anything people are very friendly and uh so have fun love you guys that's it i'll see you soon